Good and good morning. Uh, my name is Raman de Wijze. I'm here on the uh, on behalf of the Support Center for Data Sharing. The Support Center for Data Sharing is an EU initiative that facilitates data sharing for public and private use as well as reuse. And we do so by documenting, researching, and showcasing best practices across EU member states. And today we are joined by Mayara and uh, Angeles uh, from Open Data Soft, which is a company specializing in software uh, for data sharing. Um, and we will be delving into the business use cases of the company, as well as some technical and legal aspects today, and further engaging uh, some future outlooks. Um, so perhaps Mayara, Angelis, would you like to introduce yourselves and Open Data Soft? Yes, yes. Can I start? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So thank you uh, for inviting us for this interview. It's very, very nice. Um, my name is Mayara Svaris. I, I work as a customer success manager uh, at Open Data Soft. So I'm the one in touch with clients on a daily basis and, and representing them and their interests within the company. Um, and mainly also working on their projects. So once they sign with us, uh, I I work with them to implement their data portals or more specifically some specific dashboards or data visualizations. Um, yeah, so maybe Angeles, if you want to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond. Uh, and thank you for, for the invitation to, to speak with you. I am Angeles Navarro. I am an account executive at Open Data Sub since five years ago almost. And I am in charge of convincing public and private entities to share data. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, my background is uh, public affairs, well, international law, public affairs. Um, and I consider myself a little bit of a, an ambassador for opening data. Okay. And okay. tell us maybe a bit more about the company, Open Data Soft in general. Yeah, so Open Data Soft is um, a platform. It's a it's a cloud based software, uh, European, so it's uh, it's French, um, that allows governments and organizations to share their data either publicly or also in a private way. Um, and we're targeting two types of users, so very technical ones uh, with a very uh, powerful API, but also non-expert users, so citizens like you and I who are not experts on data and who would like to analyze the data from the government. So with a lot of visualizations, like user-friendly visualizations, graphs, maps, images, calendars, uh, dashboards. So. Um, uh, and we are present in more than 20 countries and we have more than 300 clients by now. Uh, we've been in the market since 2011. Okay. And do you have, is this one tool that you use um, regardless of the company or do you have various tools depending on the client, depending on which type of organization uh, you're helping? It's, it's, it's the it's, same tool. Um, we have different types of usages. So mm -hmm. depending, for example, if we have a public sector client, it's typically an open data case. Some of the clients from the public sector also uh, do um, an internal usage of the data, sharing data within their organization, um, within, within different entities of the government. Um, mm -hmm. But we, it's the same exact same tool. Uh, we have IoT related uh, projects which are completely private. I don't know, like, uh, cameras on that are monitoring the traffic in the cities or sensors for water or for traffic, etc. Um, mm -hmm. So it's different kind of usages, but it's the exact same tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what we um, what we do also, uh, and this is the part that I was talking about when I work with clients to build specific services, is mm -hmm. that we can we we have some um, applications, so apps that are basically, they're based on our APIs. So once you share the data, it is indexed in the form of an API, and we can build these like applications uh, that are basically web pages in HTML and CSS to explore the data and build specific visualizations. So those sometimes are more specific, that the one we're gonna show you later so that you can see more concrete examples, but mm -hmm. those are more specific to certain clients because it can be a completely customized project or dashboard that are built uh, for that client and for that usage. 
Yeah, so it's literally the building blocks on which the client can then themselves uh, will build upon and use for whatever purpose they, they have in mind. Yeah, correct. Okay. I think. Okay. And, and do, you, do you perhaps know something about the background of the company? What inspired DataSoft? How did it come to be? Does it come out of a specific need or an idea? Yes, so in 2011, the three co-founders um they got this idea because they were previously working in in another company um technology company and they had uh the first project let's say the first formal project for open data in france and mm -hmm. so they saw the potential of this and they decided to be entrepreneurs and to invest their time on this um so that's what inspired this and um uh, sometimes I, I say that uh, our name is Open Data Soft, so it's uh, a lot of people just think that it's public data, or there is publishing data, and mm -hmm. many times I say maybe we should be called uh, data sharing software, or um, because it's not only public, but it was born like this. It was born with this aim, so that's mm -hmm. why the name reflects that. So for now, it's more open source, right? Because you provide the code, which is open and not so much the data that is open, right? Or am I incorrect mm -hmm. here? No, 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 no. Uh, we're not an open source software. We, we contribute to the to the community. So we have a GitHub uh, um, account and we are able, uh, we, we provide uh, widgets and we also contribute to the, um, in different ways. Um, all of the front end is on open source but the back end is not yeah okay so basically the the applications that i was mentioning before so they're based on the on our widgets that we developed as ng as angel just said sorry uh for um uh, on the front end so that is open source but mm -hmm. um but yeah but the back end isn't so so yeah just the, the little nuance on the open source part okay got it um, do you perhaps want to show uh, uh, a use case already? Uh, yes. Sure. Do you want to go, Mayara? Yes. Let me. Okay. I think you might. You're seeing my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me start, for example, with this dashboard from Vancouver. So this is the open data portal from the city of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So when you enter the portal, for example, you have their homepage where they explain, um, you know, why they have this portal and what you can find on it. Uh, if also some getting started like uh, features if you want to Go build your own chart, your map, etc. And this is all so uh, the product offers you this possibility of building custom pages to um, sort of give the user this user experience with different, uh, yeah, different pages and and also dashboards and visualizations. So, for example, if you see here uh, in the URL, you have the uh, this pages indicating that this is a custom page that they developed to um, introduce as their home. And then when you go to explore uh, the catalog, so this is part of the, the product by default, you go to this explore page where you have the list and catalog of all the data sets that they provide with the metadata and also uh, different types of visualization, right? So you have table map, sometimes you have chart, uh, and always the possibility to export in different formats and also get the API. So mm -hmm. this is like the core part of our of our product is this possibility of uh, so illustrating a data catalog data catalog sorry with the metadata and the export and visualization features. Mm -hmm. Then you have the possibility of building charts and building maps, and you'll go to uh, so to our chat uh, chart builder, for example, where you can play with a data set. I'm just selecting a random data set and you'll be given um, some chart configuration 
parameters to build your own uh, chart and then have different possibilities of sharing it. So the whole project is, you know, revol revolves around this idea of uh, exploring, visualizing the data and also then being able to share it in different formats or in, in different places. So for you can share the URL to this chart. You can embed it in a in a specific web page. So a lot of, for example, as Anthony was saying before, so uh, the average citizen or students or journalists, they can then get the iframe, for example, to add it on their uh, own website. Or you can get the widget code, which is what we were mentioning before, is the open source part where you can then this is more for the the own uh, users of the of the platform, so the clients, so that they can then use this widget to build and play around with uh, with with dashboards and with pages. And so, Vancouver, for example, what they did with the the, the widgets and with the possibility of creating uh, customized pages, is that they built a dashboard to showcase the performance data of the city. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the city of Paris actually did something similar. So basically they have some targets in terms of certain um, categories uh, of service that the city delivers. So and and based on those targets, so based on those data sets that they um, collect with the data related to these targets, they build the possibility of for citizens to visualize where they are in terms of achieving or not those targets. Um, so for example, in case when they meet the target, then it will turn on green and say the target has been met. Uh, it, it explains also if the desired trend is for it to increase or decrease, depending on, on what we're looking for. And when you click on a specific one, you'll be able to see the, the evolution, like the how it has evolved through time and have also an explanation of why we're measuring this, how, et cetera. So, and also the possibility of getting in touch with them if you have questions. So, it, as you can see, I, I think this is a good example to show how it can be very, um, um, let's say, complete from, you know, gathering the data, collecting it, showing it in a data catalog, exploring it in different types of visualization, and then using different data sets to build a more complex uh, dashboard or uh, data story, for example, that you're trying to send a message or showcasing or uh, trying to you know, explain to citizens that you're meeting your KPIs, etc. So it's a, it's a, it's a good um, example of the product. It's uh, really customizable and plug and play depending on the needs of the, of the client. That's really nice to see. Yeah, exactly. Then, for example, we have uh, this is a, just a, a really fresh example because it's just recently been right new. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's the Ministry of Agriculture here in France. So this is not, for example, it's different from the one uh, from Vancouver because it's not exactly on their open data portal, which is also interesting because it's the possibility of after you you have this open data portal where you the data is shared uh, by through APIs. So then you can build upon that to build other services. Uh, so what they did is that they built this application uh, called Fresh and Local. And the goal is to also allow citizens to, so it's, you know, in, in the context also of COVID and climate change, so to foster the, the, um, the consumption of more local products. Uh, and they built this with our widgets. So this is our, our map widgets and also our search um, widgets and results etc to allow citizens to find the ones near them so you can either be uh, like find your location or filter by the types of products that you're looking for so like fruits and veggies um, the types of services if you want for example to just find um, someone that is producing it etc and then zoom in in a specific locality and it will give you like sort of the more information about uh, the producer in, in question and you can then go and visit their website so it's a it's a very interesting use and also very uh, easy to to understand for you know non non-technical users that you don't have to go and build your own map and your own graph to know and find it 
but it's offering an already pre-built app for you just to explore the data that is behind and that is shared in open data by the ministry. And for this, does the data need to be um, in a specific format or are there any uh, technical requirements for the data to go in and to create such a map? Yeah, so we have, um, we accept spe specific uh, formats, but it, let's say we're very, um, uh, it's, it's very large. So it's basically standard. So CSV formats, Excel, it can also be data that is um, in an open API, for example, that you can directly plug in uh, with your with your with our product. Um, and yeah, and I'd say it's mainly so non proprietary formats and machine readable formats. So, for example, not a PDF, but um, yeah, exactly. but uh, so but it yeah. has to be structured data. Yeah. It can be in different formats, but it has to be structured data for the platform to be able to consume it and to yeah, normalize it and then be able to do everything that Nayara just showed. Yeah, exactly. And then um, on the on the user side of it, would you also, as a user, be able to extract the data in a machine readable format or um, can you just see the visualization? Yes, so for example, um, you, so if you go to the, to the data catalog, then, uh, so this all all of the portals or um, yeah everybody that uses our product will have a page similar to this with the catalog, and then uh, once you publish a data set, you will have it in the form of a little card, and you can access it like the the export tab for example where you can see all the different um, formats that you can download in. So it's the same. So it. This data set not necessarily came from a CSV, but then it's available when you publish it with us. It is available then in a CSV, JSON, Excel, GeoJSON or shapefile if it contains geographic. And you can even add alternative exports if you want uh, and, and provide it. So in this case, they added a, a zip file. And also the open API, of course. That you could then, um, yeah. Get it here. It's very nice. You have access to everything. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, correct. The, the part. Nice. Very nice yeah. example. Thank you for that. Thank you. And maybe we can also show you um, within the. If maybe if you have it open, Manera, where I can also share it. Uh, for example, the Archive de la Planète. Um, so what is what Mayara is showing you right now? Uh, like within the. Uh, the interface, let's say, of, of a specific data set. So you're going to have different tabs. Um, by default, you're always going to have the metadata tab, uh, the tabular view, uh, the analytical, the export, and the API. And then there are other ones that are going to be able to activate, for example, the, the map one. If you have a geo point or a geo shape, then the platform is going to automatically understand that you're having geographical information and it's going to allow you to view the data in that format. Um, then you're also able to, if there's dates, for example, the calendar view is going to, to appear as well. Or um, you have images. Um, in this case, it's like a collection from, from, a, from a museum, so it is shared in also with the, with the images, uh, the photographies. Um, you're also able to create an extra dashboard where, where you're going to be able to, um, that, that's in, an, in another data set about the accidents in, in the city. Um, but so you're able to have like different tabs, uh, the, the comments tab as well, so that the citizen is able to, um, to we really have different feedback mechanisms. So that way the citizen is going to be able to, uh, I don't know, ask a question within the framework or within the interface of the data set. Um, and what Mayara is showing you is the other capability of uh, creating the dashboard within um, the data set. So if you filter on the left, left hand side i don't know you want to see um this right. case is the yeah you, you're going to be able to choose one of the filters and then and then the graphs are going to uh change uh, based on on the filters that you apply so really the platform allows you to as an admin as the government or as the organization that is sharing data either publicly or privately 
it really helps you to be able to showcase or to explain um, a lot farther because in a lot of open data portals, we find that it's very good that there is a catalog and that uh, governments and organizations are publishing data, but there's a very high uh, entrance uh, bar, let's say, for a citizen who doesn't know how to um, create a graph, etc. If, mm -hmm. if they can only export the data and then it's on them to be able to have the abilities and the skills to to create those graphs and take it to another uh, to another software or to create a GIS visualization on their own and forget about real time data. So um, mm -hmm. our tool aims to to really to let's say to help citizens to be actually interested or um, to boost this interest in consulting the data because they're going to be able to understand it in a much easier way. Yeah, yeah this way it's, it's graphically uh, easy to digest. Uh, way easy, it's way easier than exactly getting the data yourself and visualizing it. Um, yeah, this is very clear. Um, do you see also governments and, and public organizations making use of it to inform policy, for example, or is it more tailored towards citizens? No, I, yeah, you go, go, go ahead. No, fair enough. Yeah, I, I think it's so, um, I mean, it's kind of both in a way, like um, a lot of the, the open data portals, uh, for example, with, with COVID, for example, uh, we've seen that a lot of cases of cities using our portal to showcase. So here are the vaccination spots or here is, uh, I even have here, for example, in the, um, the city of issy le moulineau here in France, that they have this dashboard, uh, it's sort of like a, an observatory, I'm not sure if that's the name in, in English, uh, to explain the key indicators of the city for, you know, in a specific time. So I think it's for the last year, for example. So it it's a mix of, um, you know, as you said, so offering the citizens a possibility of exploring and understanding the data, but also to um, sort of back up their policies and, and, and show the metrics of some policies, for example. So the, the Venn dashboard is, that I showed before is exactly that, is to show like, hey, we had this policy of, you know, reducing uh, criminal offenses and that was our target and we met that target. So you're both telling the citizens, so this is the data available, but you're also you know, giving the metric behind your your policy that you've implemented. And in this case, it's uh, it's also similar. It's all about, uh, you know, giving the data and, and statistics on specific subjects. So you can have, for example, on tourism, uh, you will have some key figures based on. So in 2019, and you have indicators based on the year even before that, saying that, well, this is a decrease of 9% in relation to 2018, etc. So this is also on their open data portal and it's a specific dashboard that they built using the widgets also that, that we mentioned. And if I can add something to what Mayara is showing, I think that um, it also depends a lot on the maturity of the, the, let's say the open data initiative. What I see a lot is that uh, Governments start with this open data, you know, the desire to publish data uh, with regards to the citizens and transparency and accountability. And then once these governments have achieved a certain level of maturity, then they start asking themselves like, well, we could also use this for internal purposes for showing, for example, the mayor um, this type of dashboard, but maybe with uh, some data about security, some uh, some other type of dashboard that would allow um, the different stakeholders within the government or even the, the decision makers themselves to be able to have this kind of, you know, red, green, yellow, uh, to be able to, to take decisions in a quicker way um, without having to go to so many pages and, um, and etc. So I, I from my standpoint and the conversations that I have with different clients, I, I think that it also it is a lot related to to this kind of maturity that that the team in in charge of data um, have. 
But yeah, this sounds really it. familiar. This is also what we see across Europe that um, there has been a trend towards um, well, in the beginning, uh, when open data just started to become a thing, um, a lot of uh, member states companies were focused on creation uh, of open data. So more or less uh, quantity over quality. And as you have right. more data built up, then you can go into deeper topics and go into, OK, what does this data actually tell us and move towards more quality? Mm -hmm. uh, so that ties in uh, exactly with what we see across Europe. Um, and on that note, um, this has been a trend up until now. How do you see um, this? How do you see well open data developing in the coming years, and also the position of open data soft in that field? Do you have any any predictions for the coming, let's say, five years? <laughs> I don't know whether to call it predictions. I hope they are predictions. Uh, uh, well, I think that. Uh, Maybe we have different opinions with Mayara, I don't know. But uh, from my point of view, I think that more and more governments are certainly wanting to publish data. Um, there's, of course, like a positive competition, if you want to call it like that. If you see that, I don't know, the state or the city near you uh, is doing it and in a better way, then there's, you know, there's a little bit of this uh, positive competition um, to publish more data or to be to do it in a more innovative or citizen friendly way, um, to take a step forward and to take uh, uh, policy decisions based on data. Um, so I think that there's a trend, certainly, uh, if we if we see it globally, because Open Data Soft uh, has clients in 20 different countries, basically worldwide, a lot of them in, in Europe, but we also have in the US, in Canada, as, as uh, Mayara was showing, in Australia, in Saudi Arabia, etc. So, um, so we do see that regulation has an impact, uh, even though, let's say, the European directive, uh, if, even if there's no specific sanction, uh, also at national level, um, we we see that the things are moving. We see that uh, governments and companies are wanting to or are getting more interested in publishing data. That they're reflecting more on uh, maybe savings, maybe improving their services um, through sharing data through um, either publicly or privately as well. Uh, we have. Other cases, like for example, I'm imagining EDP in Portugal. So it's the energy company from Portugal, and they they publish part of their data, uh, but their aim is more to get in touch with the data science community to be able to improve their performance, to uh, give a better service, to to create savings for the company. Um, so, from my point of view, there is a trend more and more. Uh, to, to try to find um, these advantages on publishing and or sharing data, even if it's in a private way. Uh, so we would expect this to be uh, much stronger, especially as well in Europe with the directives, with the Data uh, Governance Act, uh, with all of the regulations and the initiatives that the European uh, Union uh, is, is um, boosting. I don't know, Mayara, if you see it in a different way. No, no, I completely agree. And I would just add the fact that also, like, I think uh, the COVID situation uh, also sort of enhanced the this trend in a way that um, you could, it was a good example, let's say, of how data sharing really helps solve uh, complex challenges. So the fact, for example, that you had data being shared at a national level, and then we experienced, for example, a lot of our clients. So we built, um, we used the, the open data, so in the case of France, for example, that was shared at the national level to build a national dashboard. And then we had our clients sort of taking uh, in the, the code, the open source code of that dashboard and implementing it on their website. And it was all done in a matter of minutes because it was already, you know, we had already processed the, the data. The dashboard was open source. So it was a really, uh, let's say, something that was possible just by the fact that it, it was open data and then uh, clients could then use that open data and enrich it uh, with other data that they had on vaccination on uh, hospital numbers etc so um, i think 
yeah, and if if maybe some of a, some of them weren't really convinced before, I think the COVID really sort of accelerated the fact that you know sharing data from all different. And we also had like private actors uh, like Google, for example, that published their mobility reports. Uh, we had a client uh, SFR, SFR, and now to say, thing that also published. So they're um, a telecommunication company that also published like anonymized. Uh, geolocation data uh, of their users to help, you know, for quarantine me lockdown measures to help governments uh, better analyze if the efficiency of those measures. So and, and that was, for example, also very useful and that is simply the power of data sharing. So a private actor sharing anonymized data to help uh, governments better do policy. And, and yeah, and I think that was um, I mean, if we have something good to come out of the COVID situation, I think it's definitely the, the enhancement of that trend that you were mentioning. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say that that's the one positive thing of COVID probably, uh, that uh, it's really uh, put forward uh, open data practices and data sharing initiatives. Mm -hmm. I think you've uh, you've showed a beautiful product um, and a very nice initiative uh, that you're doing. Very nice to see how you make data visual and graphically easy to digest for both citizens, but also how it can inform policy uh, for organizations. So really interesting to see. Thank you for that. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to add from your side that we haven't touched upon? I think maybe just the, the challenge part that we wanted to, to mention, um, Angelis. Okay, yeah, we had a uh, we had reflected a little bit on you asked us about the challenges that we see. Um, so Mayara and I talked about it, and I think that from our different tasks within the company, um, I I see a challenge in convincing uh, stakeholders of uh, of the advantages of publishing data because we have wonderful clients who are already very convinced and who have had a a long path uh, on open data already. Um, but we also, as I said, we we consider ourselves like ambassadors of opening data. And many times because of this lack of sanction in, in regulations, um, sometimes it's difficult to convince somebody um, in, I don't know, in a private company, it has happened to me many times, I go and tell them like, look in France, the energy companies and the mobility companies are doing this and that. And then I'm in another country and they're like, why in the world would I have to, you know, publish data that is from my company, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it's a little bit this, this challenge of convincing them, of showing them how open innovation, um, initiatives can you know can start without having very clear what what the return of investment is going to be but if you don't try it then if you don't create this experiment then you're never going to find it out um so it's a little bit what what edp is doing in portugal the case i was i was saying before they're investing in this a lot of open innovation programs and and initiatives um hoping that some of them are going to give them this return of investment um, so that's the challenge that I see from my uh, task, let's say, and Mayara. Yeah, so yeah, it was inter interesting because we, when you, you, so you had a question about the challenges and we both saw it in different perspectives, but uh, like related to our positions in the company. So on yeah, my course. side, it's more in the um, implementation part. So once they're convinced, so what happens afterwards, like how do we, how do we, how do we work with them? And I, and, and the biggest challenge is the part relating to the data-driven cultures. So mm -hmm. you may have, for example, so okay, we have this interest of you know, publishing data or even going beyond and building more specific customized dashboards. But then when you go deeper and start building it, you see that, well, actually the data is coming from a different department that is not collecting it in the same way that the other department that we need to cross data with. And so the data, you know, the data schema and data structure is not the same. So you have this challenge of how to cross it, or um, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not in a non-proprietary format, uh, and you have to work around it. So all of these challenges that come uh, from the fact that uh, organizations are not yet, uh, you know, with fully uh, successful implemented data-driven cultures, 
and there's a lot of still um, yeah basically cultural issues of people being able to work with data at ease being able to share it and understand um, how it's being from how it's being collected to how it can be reused so it's a whole it's a whole process and I know like actors like you guys for example uh, I think are there to to help these organizations you know also understand the strategy and and become more data driven but it's still a, a big challenge that we see on the on the implementation side and that we also do yes, that makes with. sense it takes time to develop both on term in terms of data literacy for the people using it yeah. but also just a culture of sharing data i think uh, yeah what Angelus mentioned um there is a risk for companies obviously to not share data uh, risk to sharing data for companies because uh, well, you might lose your competitive advantage and it's not yet monetized to mm -hmm. share it. So, um, yes, it makes sense that there's some reluctancy there. But um, from support center for data sharing site, we at least try to uh, promote data sharing as much as possible and show the benefits to exactly to foster this um, and to see hopefully see in the coming years after the COVID dust has settled that uh, this has been a lasting practice, so to say. Mm -hmm. And if I if I can add something else, um, there's another challenge that I, I had forgotten about, uh, which is this idea of open source. So because we're not a fully uh, open source uh, solution, uh, oftentimes in the procurement um, process, we see governments who are convinced that they would like to have a tool like ours, but either because they don't have the resources to um, to invest in in a in more in an innovative tool, or uh, we see a lot of the uh, tenders that come with specific you know um, obligation to do it with an open source solution, etc. Um, I mean, we we respect the philosophy, we understand it very well, but many times it's a lot more costly, not only in terms of money because open source is not necessarily free. You need to you know, you need to implement it and you will maybe need some hardware to pay for, etc. Um, so there's there's a lot of misunderstanding about uh, how more expensive, you know, it, it's going to be. And from my point of view, it's also uh, an opportunity cost because um, from my point of view, again, um, I think governments are, or their aim is to give the best possible public service to the citizen. And if we confuse that with being a software machine or a software factory, um, then I, I think that it's a shame because as governments, we invest less time in reflecting on how data is going to help for to provide better services to the citizens and what data should we publish. And instead of, uh, spending our limited resources and time and, and teams in pushing for opening more data and the formats and uh, the dashboards, etc. We spend more time in building a software to put the catalog out there. So I think it's also uh, an opportunity cost that is not measured and that in the end, it's the citizen that, th that doesn't have the best uh, possible outcome of it. I think it's the same in in that regard. Yes, I agree to that. Um, I think for the sake of time, um, we might have to cut it off. Um, I would like to thank you very much for showing Open Data Soft and talking about it, um, and hope to continue uh, talks in the future. Thank, thank you very much for the invitation, and we're we're glad to be. Uh, considered in the in the support center for that trade. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, we will showcase uh, the example on our website, uh, but I will keep you posted on that, um, and it will also be shared via social media, so you'll uh, you'll see it in your inbox appear. Wonderful. Great. Thank, thank you so much. Thank yeah. You so thank much. you so much for the team. Have a good day. Have a nice day. Bye bye. bye.